Hey guys, welcome back. Originally I didn't want to make a video about this project. This is just a test bench that I'm currently working on. But this takes so much time that I decided to now jump in and show you how far I've got and what I still have to do. It's a rather complicated project because I'm not using any pre-made um, parts from a old computer case, but instead manufacture everything for this board specifically, for this power supply and everything. And this is an old uh, Gigabyte mainboard. It's nothing special. It currently has a E65, no, 7500 dual core processor in, 4 gigabyte of RAM and an old graphics card. This is not meant to test components, but to test cooling loops. I will use a Xeon processor with 105 watt TDP to um, test cooling loops. So I want to get into PC water cooling, but not in the traditional way. Um, I would like to make my own radiator, um, CPU block and stuff like that, and I need a platform to test it on, because I will not risk uh, the hardware of my current main machine. Uh, this is just too expensive. So I will use this old mainboard with a other CPU, this graphics card, and, and a OEM Dell power supply. And just throw in some uh, hard drives to test the water block, radiator, and stuff like that. So my channel will not only focus on water cooling. Well, this is just a long ongoing project that I will from time to time re release videos on. The first CPU block will be a ghetto block, just, well, you will see. The same goes for the radiator, but the radiator is kind of funny. I have to show you that. Oh, that's, that's heavy. So what I got as a radiator is this thing. This is a condenser unit from a dryer, and this will be converted to a radiator. That's kind of funny, I think. And... This will at first be, as I said, this will be ghetto as as hell. <laughs> and later on I will buy some pre-made stuff and compare everything. So to not risk my main machine I will use this old hardware. And I'm currently working on the test bench itself. I'm still working on it. So I still have to have a way of installing hard drives. I need to fix the GPU in place and other minor details I still have to add, which I will now film because I try to release one video a week. So this will be now uh, this week's video. Okay, to show you how far I've got, I will now disassemble everything and explain uh, as I go. So the graphics card is currently not supported. I still have to make a support. I've got a cooling fan on top of here. This will cool all the components. I slightly modified the main board with some coolers over the VRMs and all visible transistors. This fan will cool the RAM and all the other components passively. The way it's Oh, I'm sorry guys. So, the way it's mounted right now is just with a thick piece of um, wire just stuck through this hole and I have to bend it out. It needs to be removed either way. I still have to do a few things. This is quite difficult to do. This wire is really strong. Oh, I'm at my total limit of strength. I can. Oh, okay. So, just got the wire uh, through here, bend it 90 degrees, 90 degrees over here, going out, and a small dent over here so the fan does not come out. And this just goes into this hole and then gets bent over. So, this is the cooling fan. Nice. So the power supply I'm using is a Dell OEM power supply and its 4-pin connector was really short so I had to cut the 4-pin and extend the wire. 
The 24 pin is just fine, it's only a bit tight. The main board is nothing special. This is a Gigabyte GA G41M ES2 main board, nothing really special. Um, and later on I will use a Xeon, I think it's X3220 or X3230, I'm not 100% sure. It's the 4 core 2.4 GHz version, which has um, 105 Watt TDP. Yeah. So, let me grab a screwdriver and remove the main board. So, this was actually a really difficult part to get standoffs installed on wood. I misaligned these screws over here and I had to redrill the holes, which was not possible right away. I first had to drill the holes really big. Sorry guys, again, I'm, I'm constantly bumping into the tripod. Okay, so I had to redrill these holes as uh, huge as possible to get some wooden dowels in. Then I glued them in, cut them to length and redrilled the holes. The main board can just go off, sit over here. So this is the top part. As I said, it's not finished. I will also paint this. Here you can see the screws for the left and right feet. We have the standoffs and these all are glued in and these I had to use some wooden dowels and um, well redrill the holes. These holes over here are the mounting bracket for the power supply. This is just some right angled um, metal, just some sheet metal bent 90 degrees this way and screwed in from the side and from the top with a lot of screws because this is the only thing the power supply gets held in place with. So I made a really, really strong connection. Okay, power supply is loose. I can't just... I can't. I have to get the 4-pin connector. And here is the extended cable. I actually made it way too long, so I had to use some zip ties to make it shorter. And this can go somewhere else. And this is the um, test band from underneath. Here's the holding bracket for the power supply. I actually made more holes than I uh, was able to fit in. I had to use some metal on the side, some sheet metal strips, because when they are not installed and the test bench is like this on the table and I apply some pressure over here, the whole bench bends downwards. So I had to strengthen the legs by using some metal strips. And I think this also looks quite good. And now I will proceed with the other modifications I still have to make. I just finished the mounting brackets for one of the hard drives. For now, I will only go for one of them. This should be enough. I got these angled irons drilled in holes so they sit on both sides of a hard drive like this. Then these rails get screwed into the side panel. And I also get bigger holes over here, so when these rails are screwed in place, I don't have to unscrew them to change the hard drive. Instead, I can just unscrew uh, the holding screws from the bottom and from the top through these bigger holes. And I also try to um, get a nice oval shape uh, opening for the SATA cable, but this didn't work quite well, but I think it's good enough for now. And keep in mind, everything will be painted uh, later, so these small dents and everything that doesn't look good will hopefully look better once it's painted. So now let me assemble everything. Okay, the rails are now 
fixed in place. What you have to do is drop in the hard drive just like this. Just screw the screws into the hard drive on the bottom first and then turn it upside down. Get the screws into the mounting holes. So this way you can access the hard drive without removing the whole bracket. Even when everything is assembled, all the parts are on top, you can easily flip it on this side without a problem. Everything is held in place by the standoffs. The power supply is over here. So this is, I think, the easiest way to mount the hard drive that is still accessible after everything is assembled. So I will not attach anything on this side, so I can always flip it like this. Now the next thing to do is to get some easy access switches like power on, reset. Maybe I have front IO fixed that in place over here and hopefully I'm not missing anything. I have to think about that. Okay, the only thing that I was still missing is a way to support the graphics card and the way I did it was using a flat piece of iron, screw it into the wood, having a long threaded rod extend out of the iron and then use two nuts to hold the graphics card in place. Unfortunately, I did not have any front I.O. from an old computer case, so I just used right angled iron to fix two switches in place for power on and reset. Here we have some footage from the back side. I just use a bit of cable ties to hold the cables in place, but you can easily add some way of cable management. The only thing this design is missing is the easy way to access the backside of the mainboard in the CPU area. The power supply is right underneath the CPU area. You could just flip the side of the power supply and the hard drive. Now I'm going to apply a bit of thermal paste, just cheap one and a cooler that I had on hand at this time just to make the first power on and make sure that everything works. So this is my test bench. Not everything turned out to be quite good, like the paint job on top. I painted the top part two times and I think I made the second coat too early. So partially there is the first coat removed. I have a weird pattern on top. Some of the holes I had to redrill because of the paint and overall it's not really good. I mean I'm not into painting too much so um, well it, it just did look better without black paint I think um, other than that it's okay it's good for my purpose I don't need uh, much access to the area underneath the CPU I'm just going to test my cooling solutions and if I ever use a aftermath cooler I just remove the mainboard it's not a big deal for me but as I said, you can easily swap the power supply with the hard drive and just change them. Although not everything turned out to be perfect, this is certainly good enough for my application. And I hope you liked the video. And if you did, please leave a like. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.